Slouching. Hey. Oh, I don't got no light, do I? Tiresome there. Man. Oh, waiting for guys to come in. Waiting for people to come in. Hey, Tom. First person to pop in that I see. Okay. Running a little late, guys. You know me having technical difficulties. For some reason, I love to have those. Look at there. Look at the lovely ladies coming in already. Y'all love showing up. I appreciate you guys. Y'all do such a wonderful job. Um I don't know. I think y'all might have y'all might have uh, throw some you might have those songs. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I lost everybody. Uh, I got a call in. Sorry about that. Uh, it's one of those days, man. Uh, not sure why, but yeah, one of those days. So, I'm going to give you guys maybe um, like two more minutes. Uh, two more minutes to um, come in and it won't get started. And hopefully we could uh, <laughs> get it going. Um, and I'm also waiting for my guests. Um, oh, and if you see that I don't have my lovely co-host, um, unfortunately she was unable to make it today, um, but that's fine. Um, I told her that she's going to be missed today, so, um, hopefully we'll have her up here, um, uh, next Friday. But how are you ladies doing? I saw maybe one male MS warrior come in. I'm getting ready to call our guest. Uh, for some reason, she couldn't call in, so. Let's see what happens. Hello? Uh, Ms. Edwards. Hi, you are live on Fierce Friday. How are you? I'm 
Yeah, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing lovely. And yourself? I'm great. Um, outside of all my technical difficulties that's going on. Okay. So, um, I'm not sure if you have a um extra um available um gadget outside of your um phone. No. Okay. Besides a landline, this is my cell. That's your cell? Yes. You said you do have a landline though? Yes. Well, if you want, um I can contact you on your landline so that if um you could see the comments on the live feed just in case someone asks you a question. Perfect. Okay, I can just text it to you, no problem. Okay. Yeah, um just sent a message huh? Oh, uh, hello? Yes, um send it through Messenger and I'll call you right back. Alright, thanks. Hey, Miss Pat. Hello. And hello all the lovely warriors that are coming in. Y'all see my shiny Mr. Clean head I shaved. It's really almost like a bowling ball. If I had like three holes in it, I can just Just knock over all of my uh, ish issues that I'm going with here. Yeah, There's actually uh, that laughing emoji that just came up. <laughs> if I didn't have this beard, I probably look like it. Wait, hold on. Let me try to see if I can make the face. I can't. I can't do it, but it's just the, the, the circumference of my head. They need to make me an emoji. How you ladies doing? You ladies doing okay? Can I get a thumbs up for you ladies doing okay? Anybody's in here? Everybody's just watching. I'm waiting for Miss Edwards to um, give me her landline. But while we're waiting for that, all right, guys. So we had Monday where we talked about the um, the strength of men. You know, uh -huh. mm. yeah, right, right. You ladies know you're probably stronger than us. No, no, we're still strong. You guys, like I stated on the poster, you bring um a very elegant view to MS. Um. Ah, they're in Baton Rouge, and they lost power, and she's like, uh, in bad weather, I don't think she needs to be on the landline, um, or the phone, period. Let me, let me tell her that, guys, I don't want her to. I want her to be safe. That's the last thing. That's the last thing we want for her to be, uh, be in trouble. And, you know, electricity gets shocked or whatever. Safety comes first. That's if she's able to answer. Hello. Hey, Miss Elwood. Um, 
You say you having bad weather? Oh, I'm sorry. I might have called the wrong number. Okay. I'm sorry. Ooh, did y'all hear me make a mistake? Oh. Okay, no, I didn't make the mistake. She gave me the wrong number. I'm known for doing that. I'm just going to tell her that's okay. Okay. All right. So we're gonna hold off on Miss Edwards. Uh, I'm gonna try and get her on and on another day. Um, it would have been nice to talk to her. Um, she's a very strong um, warrior, and with it being female day, it would you know I wanted her to come on and just give her you know brief story. Um, about her um, life with MS. But if you guys saw where I posted on um, hey, Miss Barbara on my page, um, I shared on my page about the symptoms with um, females that how you guys possibly might have issues with, yeah, um, 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 menstrual, um, female things, um, like different hormones and whatnot. Uh, and it was very surprising. I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, the like read the post and saw where it talked about um ty test to test to can never say this word right to men hormones to testosterone <laughs> uh, low levels of it is um you see People that have a low level of testosterone, again, not sure if I'm saying that right. So, um, have you laugh or two um, with that. Um, it's a high, um, I saw it in, in, a, in a man and, and a um, thing that I was reading about on the men's side as well. But, um, ooh, all the light is just baking me in here. <clears throat> but, the testosterone being low, they are seeing signs of, um, MS and more people in that, like, situation or whatnot. The testings, and that's so weird. So, it's like, uh... Maybe that's possibly why it's more frequent now in females that you guys are being, that women are being more diagnosed than men outside of what I was stating last, well, this past Monday, that um, I also feel the reason for that is because men don't go get checked. You know, you ladies are... Uh, not saying that um, you're not strong or anything, but you guys take better care of yourselves. Um, I could probably say I'm a little, I'm a little bit high average when it comes down to. Um, <clears throat> I don't always just go to the doctor, but if I'm not feeling well, um, I will go. So you guys are very superior in that um, department. So, kudos for you guys, and you know, you 
jump on trying to make sure that um, you're good to go. So outside of um, losing Miss Edwards, like I say, this is about the ladies here, and I would love to have um, if the floor is open for um, any other lovely ladies up here that would like to do a live feed, I will bring you guys up. Just hit me up in the comment box. Or um, if you would like to call in instead, um, I will post a number for you to um, call in because I know a lot of you guys are shy, um, let alone, yeah, um, like Miss Edwards was telling me, uh, her hair wasn't doing is wasn't doing too great, so <laughs> she didn't, uh, and then she was shy too. So I definitely understand that. I was just be trying to get you guys to just not only be heard, but to be seen, put a face to the uh, lovely message that you're bringing across this feed. So, um, it's, it's kind of um, crazy when you, you have, you know, have all the options, social options and stuff, you know, I don't know why I didn't think about the phone. Well, I did think about the phone option, but I never implemented it in the um, system. But anyway, so, <clears throat> ladies, I know Miss Scott. Miss Scott, you were watching and you wanted to come on last week. I keep thinking last week. Guys, I'm just everywhere, if you can tell. I'm, I'm trying to push through here. A um, lot of issues going on. Um, Miss Scott, I know that I seen you fly out there for um, like a, a while ago, and I know you wanted to talk during the man, the men episode. Um, do you want to come up today or anybody? Because I'm not a female, and I can sit up here and just imagine what you ladies go through. And I love you guys' participation when it comes down to um, the live feeds that I'm doing. You guys are very, um, y'all express a lot. Um, I know sometimes it can be very, um, and that's fine, Miss Scott. Um, I know that um, not not knocking um, not knocking anything that what men go through not not at all but you know you ladies have that The kids, because sometimes in a situation where you're separating from your partner, you, you know, normally the um, woman is basically, in so many cases, they end up with the um, kids. And so to have the burden of MS and depending on the age of you, of the kids, you know, that can be hard. And just even the separation in itself can be hard. Miss um, <clears throat> Barbara says that she believes that MS has affected her body for many years before being diagnosed. Um, Miss Barbara, you're going to have to come up and say that word because uh, I can sit up here and try and pronounce it. If you guys can look at her comment because I jacked that word up. But um, whatever that word is, 
it happened at age of 30 with her and um she has bright she had bright's disease at age 9 and colon issues and that was just a few of her issues she had but so you Miss Barbara uh, that's a lot and how old are you now if you don't mind me asking and don't sit up here and hurt me because I'm asking Miss Barbara her age Miss Barbara, you had your female parts removed. Was it because of MS? Huh? Okay, Miss Barbara, you're 56, and you had every. A lot of stuff removed due to complication of MS. And, you know, I I believe we don't understand that aspect of MS as well. We, the complication is what gets us. We get diagnosed with MS and MS that sits over there in the darkness. And um, I actually call it, um, I look at it as our body going to war um, and the enemy which is MS is has a foothold that is just going around in our body just sending out troops attacking certain parts of our body and once that part of our body goes down it's like our defenses um, you know and our immune system is our defense mechanism that is our uh, military. If you want to look at it, if you want to, uh, metaphorically speaking, that's our military. And MS has like snipers and whatnot. If you want to like put a visual thing to it, and it's just picking, picking all our um, special agents off that's allowing our body to function like it should. So, um,. You guys have a couple of, um, let me see, Miss Barbara also said that's a lot of reasons for her tremors, and talking to a lot of female um, warriors, I'm seeing that as being a, one of the main, if not many, issues that you guys are coming across. Um, trimmers even seeing it um, so is that's not great at all miss bobber okay miss bobber has also been diagnosed well she was diagnosed with, diagnosed with lupus first then ms five years later I've heard that a lot too uh, I know maybe, if not, two more warriors that have been diagnosed with lupus as well. And that is like the weird, most weirdest thing. Because the doctors say that lupus is kind of like the cousin to MS. And to have two cousins sitting up occupying your body, causing conflict. I know that's not a it's not a great feeling at all. So um not sure not sure of your well Barbara, how's your pain level when it comes down to having both of those illnesses outside of everything else that's being um um affected? <laughs> Miss Scott, you call it me as <laughs> a 
And for everybody that's coming in, that's rolling in pretty fast, hello, how are you? Miss Holly. Uh, Miss Holly um, head starts shaking uh, really bad when she's stressed and everyone can see it. That makes you mad. And is it because you can't control the uh, the movement of your head? And or what is it like? Are you embarrassed, Miss Holly? <clears throat> and it's it's very interesting that you say that, Miss Barbara, about the uh, C. CBD oil. Um, how do you, I'm not really sure on how how you um, use that. Like, is it something that you rub on, or I know there's um like uh, I know you, since you got these vape pens, I know that you have the CB. Um, the oil that you can put in a vape pen and smoke as well if you don't want to go and roll a um, blunt or two and smoke or however you, you put it in a white paper um, a newspaper uh, brown paper sack or how, however you do your doobies <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> Miss Holly says that, um, hold on, let me see. Okay, Miss Barbara refuses all medication for lupus and MS. Okay, so, um, with you saying that you're not on any treatment for both, how is how is life? You know how are you how are you coping uh, with that? Because some people are able to just say, "Forget this, I'm good. I don't want any medication, um, even though I'm hurting. It's uh, just painful as hell, or maybe not painful as hell, or just just going through the motions, and I can do it. Forget all these." drugs that they're trying to push into me um so let me ask you this miss um bobber would you like to uh would you like to come up if you're not camera shy and be a little bit more um outside of um typing and texting or call in and you know let us you know, tell us a little bit more about what's going on with you and that's for anybody else that's on, that's just come on. Um, and for female warriors only, this is the female version of Fierce Friday. If you would like to come up and um, talk more um, about how MS has affected you throughout your years from being diagnosed to now. Or you can come on on a live feed. You know, I could push the little button and invite you. And you can come on and let everybody, you know, be introduced to everybody. And, um, but I still like the communication that we're doing here and the comments. So, uh, Miss, Miss Holly says, um, uh, with her shaking, she is like, it really makes her mad. She can't hide it. So let me actually, and, and I guess that's something really to look at. Why, why are we wanting to hide it? Um, and the reason why I'm asking that is, I know some of the things can be very embarrassing. And I'm thinking that's what we're really worried about um you know because it's not our usual self well the self that 
we prefer to be. Um, and so, walking with a limp or a drop foot, um, and like what Miss Holly is going through, I definitely can understand how you can look at it as it. I don't want everybody to see me like this. I don't want everybody to know. Um, but if it's something that you can't control, guys, if it's something that you can't control, then there's no need to run from it. As in, run from it as in hiding. Because it's going to make you... Even stress, well, more stress. That's that's the right way of saying it. it's going to make you more stress, which is going to sit up there and cause you probably to shake even more, um, bring on even more tremors, um, even more uh, flares. You guys, you you have to really think about that. The more that we try to hide and run from what's going on with us and pretend that it's not happening that does cause a lot more stress because um, we're too busy worried about what the next person is going to think or how that person looks at us and I think that's a problem with a lot of us, and if not all of us in the world, that fear of being judged. And MS is one of those illnesses that grabs a person and just um, sometimes destroy the person who they are. And so then you have to recreate yourself. And I think we all have a hard problem with um, well, not a not all of us, but some of us have a hard time adapting to change and adapting to the fact that um, we are needing to um, try something different because that person that we used to be is <clears throat> we're not that person anymore regardless of how bad we want to get back there how you need to look at life is I can be better regardless if you're not walking the same regardless if you don't look the same you can be better and say how can you how can I be better if I'm in a wheelchair or my mobility is gone or um like what miss um holly is going through with her hip, you know head shaking you know how's that how's that better Just, you have to look at you have to find good a good side of of a bad situation because believe it or not, even though it looks good, or even though you feel like what you're doing is benefiting <clears throat> benefiting you, it still does have a actual uh, how can I explain? Um, it is still having a bad effect somewhere in the universe. Which might not have anything to do with you at all. And it might do. And you just don't know it and you just don't see it. Because it just at that moment, it's wonderful, it's great. And matter of fact, food, when you put it in your mouth, it's a wonderful thing. Especially if it's the food that you like. But it might be, if we're learning, <laughs> a lot of the foods that we're eating, especially from out of restaurants, from out of stores that have been processed, we're basically poisoning ourselves. And you...
And um, I got folks telling me Facebook kicked them off. God darn Facebook. I'm going back to some of the um, comments here because I missed a lot of you guys' comments. Miss Holly says that um, she remembered being in court going through her divorce and wrote a note and split it. And split it over to um, one of her lawyers asking him if her head was moving or the clock on the wall was moving. He just smiled at me and patted my legs so I knew immediately. Um, and, you know, see, that's what I'm stating about. <clears throat> so is it that someone seeing us and I guess that's something that that can be a conversation in itself. <clears throat> Are we worried about what the next person is going to say when they see us? When we come outside and we're just being like uh, have no control <clears throat> over our body parts per se to a certain degree. You know, that we're walking somewhat, maybe. Um, and for those like are in a wheelchair or in a motorized chair where, you know, you, you can't control your hands or um, like Miss Holly saying, um, head movement. Are we really embarrassed about that? Have you asked yourself that? A lot of us. And I, I'm, that's actually a question that I'm asking. Um, a lot of you warriors that are watching... Are you embarrassed about the person you are now? That's a good question if you haven't asked yourself about that. And, you know, like Miss um, Barbara said, it took her 10 years to come to terms with her illness. And there you go, Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara says she has a great outlook on life and she believes she's truly blessed. And that's how she deals with life. Miss Laura, you say some days you're and you're embarrassed. But you know you have to go back to the comment that Ms. Um Barbara just said. And that's why I was trying to explain just a couple of minutes ago. We get so hooked on our past lives, regardless. Um, and if you think about it, if you look back, some of us were sitting in a position where, uh, ah, hey, I was just about to say it, Miss uh, Miss Barbara, could be worse. You know, uh, some of us are sitting where we think we're in a great position. And a lot of those positions and the reason why we feel great is because material things, the stuff that we have around us, when we're really not looking in the inside, are we happy? Can we be happy without all of this? And if you really sit and you think about it, no, because we get attached to a, a lot of this, and a lot of this is kind of the reasons why we're stressed. A lot of that out there is the reason why we're stressed. Um, and I can say this looking in a, at a um, male's point of view at how a lot of things were taken from me due to this illness that I couldn't do anymore, I had to adjust. And Miss Lori, you know, if I seem like I'm fussing at you guys, I'm not. Um, 
and me to you, Miss Lori, I I definitely know how strong of a warrior you are, and not saying that um, <clears throat> any of your other ladies um, that are watching this or that will watch this that you're not strong at all. It's just that we together, regardless if we're male or female, we have to find that point to where we can look at that look at the bigger picture you can be so worse so so worse hello guys everybody that's coming in um, this is the female live feed of Fierce Friday. We're talking to mainly the females, getting comments from the females, even though there might be some males up in the audience here. And if you are males, glad to have you here because there still could be some things that the females are saying that you might need to hear. So, um, I'm going to read. Give me one second. Because this might be something that you guys. Because I don't know if everyone saw that post that I put up. I am going to put the link in here. Is any? I'm also um edit the um the live feed once I'm done and put it in the description as well. But that website there is eight common MS symptoms found in women with MS. So check that link out. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Miss Barbara says that her job was her identification for many years um, so she couldn't work she had to dig down deep to understand and realize she was so much more than just the job look Miss Barbara you you just um, he didn't got out of the park hey Jessica you were diagnosed in 2003 I was thinking about myself and say 2011 um, for anybody that's tuning in, that's, that's just came in, um, the floor is open. We're, um, females only that you can come up and express how you feel about what's going on to, um, your life with, um, MS It's available for you to come up live on the feed or I can post a number where you can call in and we can just hear you um, hear your lovely voice if you're shy um, let's see how much time I got going on here I got a couple of I got a good few minutes to go if anyone wants to come up while I'm talking um, I know you guys get tired of my voice what's up Mario man Uh, but Jessica, um, you were diagnosed in 2003. Would you like to come and um, come up or call in to tell us a little bit more about yourself? And again, that's any um, any ladies that are watching. Uh, let me know. But um, yeah, <clears throat> that post I came across that post it was very interesting. The um, information that was in there. And uh, Kimberly, would you like to come up? I can't believe my computer just wants to go out on me. Hello, Miss Jackie. 
All right, Miss Jessica, let's see if I can get you up here. Okay, your viewers. Miss a um a request. You just have to um click it to accept it. And it would bring you up and we will see you and we will talk to you. Sometimes it wants to work and then sometimes it doesn't. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that is like the biggest issue that we're having. Hey, well, hello. Hey. Well, how are you? Hello. Um, fighting a headache. <laughs> what did uh, what did you seems think? to be the when did the headache start? Uh, probably about age thirteen. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been having the same headache? No, I just my headaches are tied to the weather. Wow. And to uh hormonal imbalances and things like that. I mean, it's funny that you it's funny that you say that because <laughs> um that post, that that link that I just posted stated mm -hmm. one of those um, common some symptoms that a female can go through with the hormone issue. It's, and oh, yeah. When did you get diagnosed again? 2003? Uh, three. So do you think that you could have got diagnosed before that? Uh, my neurologist traced back with me. My first symptoms appeared at my age of 13. Wow. I was 27 when I was formally diagnosed. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I feel bad asking, you know, they, they say that it's rude for a man to ask how old a woman is, but just to size everything up, how, are you, how old are you now? I am 41 years old, and I'm very proud of the fact that I am 41 years old. I was going to say you look great. So, how? <laughs> Thank you. How do you? Um, are your issues with mobility are like? They vary. Okay. They vary. They they have been getting worse um, in the last five years since the birth of my daughter. Okay. Um, I am dealing with that. I am trying to exercise. It is just been, I am fighting to stay out of the wheelchair. That is, that is my biggest goal. Now, so. I guess the biggest question is, are you on any uh, preventive medication? At this time I am doing uh, to Seabury once every 28 days. Okay. Um, the neurologists say that technically it doesn't really help me um, because I am not relapsing, remitting MS. I am uh, pro progressive stage two, I think. Okay. So it doesn't technically help, but they're afraid of the rebound effect if I go off it. So how long have you been on it? A uh, little over a year. What were you on before? Galenia. How long were you on that? That was two years. And I tried my best with it, and it didn't seem to help me at all. <clears throat> before that, I was on Avanex. OK. How did that work? And that worked very, very well up until, or I would say two years before my daughter was born. So uh, then I started getting migraines. How old were you when you but, were, when you were, <clears throat> when you were birthing your baby daughter? 
Well, I've got two. Okay. Actually, um, the first one came along um, 2008. I was 32. Okay. And the second one came along when I was 37. Okay. In 2016. So, so great um, for you to be on because that's a that's a lovely question to to ask you for the women that are watching that's possibly wanting to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. All right. So was this a plan pregnant? Were they, were they planned pregnancies or? Well, <laughs> we tried uh, to do the whole planning and then said, forget it. We're not going to be able to plan this. This is not something we can plan. <laughs> um, put it in God's hands and said, it's him, not us. And lo and behold, I got Joseph. I call him my miracle. Okay. Um, because of the fact that I was able to get pregnant with him in the first place. And then um, I went in to be induced with him. And his umbilical cord was caught between his head and my cervix. So every contraction cut off his blood supply. So we had to have an emergency cesarean. When was he, um, what month was he born in? May. Oh, okay. Matter of fact, his 10th birthday will be Sunday. Okay. Um, I have a little experience with that as well. Uh, for some reason, um, uh, my, my mom stated that I was playing basketball in her belly because I, the same thing happened to me. Uh, <laughs> they had to pull me out that way too, but mm -hmm. You got off your, you had to get off your treatment, right? Right. And I was off for two years after his birth. Wow. Because I wanted, I wanted to uh, breastfeed and all that good stuff. Okay. Now. And then I decided to go back on treatment because it was safer for me physically. And that's what I was, to be on treatment. That's what I was about to ask. Now, did you have any complications during your pregnancy? Nope. Not at all. I gained a lot of weight. My ankle swelled up, but I was fine. <laughs> I, uh, my sister had my nephew. Um, she actually kind of, she got diagnosed during her pregnancy, and it, it did a really toll on her. Um Kind of look, seemed like she had a stroke or whatnot, or side of her face was hanging down. Right. Um. So, I, I, I guess this that that questionable thing that we're so all different and things affect us different. So, for ladies that are watching, um you are able to get pregnant. It's just, you still want to keep your doctor in the loop and you just want to work oh, yeah. closely. Definitely. Definitely keep your doctor in the loop. Let them know that you are wanting to try. Um, I asked my neurologist from the very beginning and he said to stay away from Rebif and Capaxon if I wanted to try for children. I, 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 I don't know about rebuild, but I say stay, stay away from compacts and all together <laughs> when it comes to, um, but going back to the, to Sabri situation, um, Sabri for me was my miracle drug. I was, I had, um, I was second stage myself. At the, yeah. When I got diagnosed, I had got on Compaxin for like six months, and it didn't prevent anything. My lesions were like. That's kind of like the Galenia was with me. It was like I wasn't even doing anything. Yeah, and so, so yeah, they put me on. They put me on that, and I was actually on Sabri for maybe. Um, I want to say. And all because I got off a couple of years. Uh, it was maybe like two years where I um, had to, I couldn't take it. 
because I didn't have a neurologist. And um, maybe six years I was on it. And, mm -hmm. and it basically stalled. It stalled my eyes. Uh, and put me in re, uh, relapse remitting. Uh, and so that's where I've been until the, the beginning of January where I had to get on um, Ultimus. But, uh, so you say you've been on for a year now. Yep, a little over a year. And to be completely honest, I can tell the difference. Um, when that, I'd say day 25 comes around, I can tell, yep, it's time, it's time, for, for, the it's time for a treatment. Yep, 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 it's time it's for a treatment. Time. Yeah. And it does help. And, and when I'm out and about, I'm like, you know, when I go out, Side my home, I have a go go scooter okay. that I ride around on. Um, but in the house, I use a walker or a cane, so I'm still mobile. Okay, I'm still I'm still able to go up and down stairs. Not very well, mind you, okay. but I can do so. You are Mary, right? Yes, married 17 years. Oh, great, great, great. Now, how has, how's MM, how's MS um, complicated marriage for you? Because I know it can be kind of complicated. I wouldn't say it really has complicated mar our marriage. Um, I would say, to be completely honest, if anything, it has made it stronger. Well, that's a good term. Um, in, in our situation, Alan, my husband, yeah, he's taken the role of being a caregiver very seriously. And he wanted to have children as much as I did. So we agreed that I would stop working, um, even the part-time position that I was working when we had children, I so I am now a stay-at-home mom. Okay. And he does his best to be as supporting as possible. That is so awesome. And it is. And it's not very often that you hear these kind of stories. So that's one of the reasons why I want to share that it is possible. It does happen. You may not hear about it. Yeah. But it does happen. And, you know... That's like, um, like you just stated, um, I'm glad that you, you, you know, you did say that, um, because it is so, I've heard and I've, and I've read, I've had, um, female warriors come to me and talk about situations like that and it's more on the bad side than it is with um, how you're you're stating, and it's sad to be honest. Um, it is. I because of men don't really talk. There's not too many men that I've come across that have expressed how maybe not even marriage, but just their partner, and to say. Um, I, I came across an issue like that, but um, but majority of the warriors that I talk to are females and they divorce or headed to divorce. Um, and a lot of the reasons are because it's the, com the complication of MS. And, and yeah. it's very disappointing that that the it's it's extremely stressful yeah to a spouse to be a caregiver yeah um i have fallen numerous times i will admit it i have fallen so many times it's not even funny we can't count and i make the phone call and tell him i've fallen again and the very first question out of his mouth is did you hit your head? Yeah, that is the, it, 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 
because you don't want to. And if I, yep, if I answer yes, it's okay, call the ambulance, you yeah. know. So I will be there as soon as I can. So he's, he's there. He is there. That is, I can honestly say that. So how is your, um, how is the, your involvement with the, with the kids and, you know, like the day-to-day -day, uh, routine? Well, right at this point in time, I am experiencing some severe fatigue issues. Uh, so waking up in the mornings is really hard. Okay. But today was the very last day of school for the year. So, yeah, wait, I know. Wait, it. hold on. Uh, so that might be a good thing son, and then a bad thing because they're going to be jumping around everywhere. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's actually, it's a time I'm looking forward to it oh. because now my son, who will be turning 10, will be able to help entertain her on those mornings where I yeah. wake up and... I'm having a hard time getting out of bed. Yeah. And I'm not going to have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning to wake him up to get him to go to school. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was a killer. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. What is he, he may be there double digits, but he doesn't hear his alarm clock. Ah, uh, okay. Now, does he, does he understand... Um, What's going on with you? Yes. I uh, picked up some literature to be able to explain it to him in a level that he can understand. Um, I explained to him how my white blood cells in my body are attacking that coating on my nerves and that it's called myelin and... That's what's causing the difficulty with me walking and things like that. And so he completely understands that I have a disease that is going to be with me for the rest of my life. And there is a good chance that it can make me worse. And he understands that. And there are days that I'm sure it breaks his heart to, to watch me struggling to to get up to do something and he tries so very hard and be there and he'll step in and take elizabeth my my daughter aside and say we need to leave mommy alone for a little bit Aww. so he doesn't dance he is he's so awesome he is well, he is my little warrior. Oh, 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 that is so cool. And that's very impressive. And not saying that um, the, fa the fact that you're able to do that. And um, so many people are scared to be like, well, hey, how are you? <laughs> this is my daughter, Elizabeth. She is my little sunshine. <laughs> how are you? She said she came in here because she's hungry. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir, can you help you, sister? Goldfish? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, goldfish. That is, um, yes. we, we as people, regardless of uh, male or female, we have, uh, and I was just stating something before you came on about being embarrassed about this. Mm. And from being embarrassed, a lot of a lot of us tend to hide and don't want anyone to see or don't want to talk about what's going on. And, right. and it's just my opinion. I feel that's why a lot of this is in the dark um, because I was stating on Monday. I don't know if you were able to catch any of that. Um, I no, I, I didn't get to. I came across a um, some literature online where it's not even it's not even registered. 
um, about how many people are being diagnosed with MS. It's not being clocked. So wow. they really don't know how many people in the world are diagnosed. They can only guess. Oh and so it's like um, how, you know, how are you going to know how to treat something that you don't even know how many people are affected? And, um, mm -hmm. but it's awesome. Though. I'm glad that you came up and um, you were able to um, say a couple of things that you were stating especially about the uh, pregnancy in which you are very brave to come up because a lot of people are very shy and, you know, they have bad hair days. Uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm having one of those. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very, it's very brave of you to, um, to come up to, uh, to give us your story and your, um, which is awesome. I like your the the um, the spirit that you have. Um, There's things that um, and before I let you go, how do you feel? Um, it's because it was something that we were talking about about being that person before being diagnosed. Um, how did you look at life, if you can remember? In the very beginning. Um, right after the initial diagnosis, I seriously thought my life was over. Okay. I, I really did. Um, we were married in 2001. Um, we had just bought our house in 2002. And then I was diagnosed in 2003. Okay. So... I, I really seriously, I was expecting the divorce papers to show up. I was expecting, you know, everything to just come crumbling down and crashing to the ground. I really was. And that's when my husband proved to me what real love is. Wow. He, my parents came up from Texas, because that's where they're at right now. I'm in Kansas. Okay. They came up. My mom was ready to pack my bags and take me home with them. And Alan came out, and he said, you try to take her away from me, and I will follow you and track you down and bring her back. Oh, that's... He was not to let me go. I'm trying not to uh, be a big baby on live. <laughs> So <laughs> but that is so. So am I. That is so cool, and I, and he, will you let Mister Allen know that? That's I. I appreciate that, as um, because you you hope that the person that you call yourself being with for the rest of your life, um, look at those um, vows the same way that you do and that very famous part through sickness and health I think, exactly i think people don't look at that uh, no. they just look they just look right past that as soon as that sickness come in i can't deal and not, and not trying to say I, that it's not hard on them because it is and you know you have to look at both sides but you also have to realize that, okay, what if you were sick? What do you expect for me exactly. to love you and be there for you? So exactly. I'm expecting the same thing, and it doesn't work out that way in so many cases. And to hear that your case is so far better than some situations, I'm happy to uh, to know that. And I it it almost feels like I'm bragging about it in a way. No. Yeah, you, know, you know, I have a caregiver and a spouse that is ready to to hold out and be with me and but yet then I stop and I look at it and I think, you know, look at all these couples that 
have been together for 50 plus years and they've been through it all too. Yeah. It may not be the same situations. Yep. But now they're going through situations that are just as difficult or even more so than what I am going through. And they are still holding it together. So that's my goal. And you know what? I see that. Um, I see, um, I work at PetSmart and I see, um, and when I see the couples that come in, they're holding hands um, and they kind of melts my heart. <laughs> I'm very, very emotional when it comes down to relationship and love because I, I, you know, I feel we're here to love each other and we're so focused on evil and, 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 and hurting when if we realize if caring if we were to care about each other regardless race color size height the world would be so much better uh, that is correct and so that is correct. with that being said miss jessica i totally appreciate um i was worried there for a second ladies because the, the ladies warriors are always coming through for me. And um, I thought y'all was going to leave me hanging. <laughs> but you, you you came through for all the ladies there, Miss Jessica. And um, again, like I say, you, you um, I know you guys have your possible ups and downs. Um, it's it's, it's going to be there regardless if they're small or big. Um, just let him know that not only do you appreciate Miss Allen, I'm over here appreciating them too because we we need more we need more partners like that in the world when it comes down to our situation. So my hat's off to him. Um, let him know that someone says thank you. I will definitely do that. I will definitely do that. I know well, it's not easy working a 40 plus hour job and then coming home and, you know, not having dinner ready or yeah. not having the dishes washed or yeah. needing a load of laundry done. Yeah. And those are things that I struggle with. And he understands that. And he doesn't blame me for not having it done. He, he accepts it. And that's, so, that's, that's basically what you he call. Is, he is a big of a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is love in the truest form. That's that's very, that's concentrated love, not diluted at all. So, but Miss Jessica, um, again, like I say, that you're a warrior in yourself. Um, you're fighting one hell of a fight. And you're doing one hell of a job. Don't look, don't look at yourself no lesser than um, anything, um, because we have a tendency of grabbing hold to that past and uh, wanting to get back there. When you know what, it, it wasn't meant for us to have that past. Recreate what you got now and make it better than anything in the world, regardless of how fatigued you are. Um, Miss uh, Miss Barbara, uh, Miss Holly was just stating how blessed she still feels because she could be worse. And I'm pretty sure you're looking at the situation in the same light. And a lot of us are not, and which makes things even stress, more stress. Yes. Um, yes, it does. You got to take it one day at a time, folks. Yeah. One day at a time. And every day is different. But remember, every day that you can get out of your bed is a good day. Yeah. It's a blessed day. So, Miss Jessica, again, totally appreciated you guys um, seeing Miss Jessica off with some hearts and thumbs up. And you're, you're available to come on at any time, ma'am. 
Um, you see me on, feel free. If it's a topic that you're very interested in, um, you already came on. So don't be sitting up here talking about, oh, no, my hair is too frizzy. You just said you're having a bad hair day now, so I'm not going to take that as an excuse. <laughs> no, I, I had to get over the shyness, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, ma'am, you have yeah, we're, we're over it. you have a great night, and again, thank you and love you. Thank you, thank you, and like I said, everybody, every day, one day at a time. You're all blessed. See all you of later. you. Bye. Okay, ladies. Um. That was a very uh, that was very awesome um, story to hear. Um, very triumphant situation on her part, you know, going through the two pregnancies, um, and like she was stating, you know, sometimes she feels that she's boasting about her husband, but. Um, I don't think it's a form of boast when you can say that you do have someone to support you, regardless if it's your partner or hell, it could be a friend, or even if it came down to be your parents or even one of your kids, regardless of the age, um, just to have that support in itself is um, something that we need. Um, now, I'm not stating if you don't have it, then you just um, you just shit out of luck. You know, I'm not saying that because still, regardless if you have that support, you got to find it in yourself. You have to find it in yourself. And that's why I was thinking about that being embarrassed. Because if you think about it, we have MS. MS, MS, <laughs> see like right now, MS is very, <laughs> um, Crap, and I lost my word now. Is it unpredictable? Unpredict unpredictable. Ah, MS is very unpredictable. MS is very unpredictable. And so you have to understand that you could be in a far worse situation than what you are in. And to grasp on the fact that you just lost something or something is not working right can make matters even worse. It can make you relapse. You can get in a far worse flare than you had maybe two years ago, a hit last week, a uh, matter of fact, two hours ago. So, um, Missy, you're right. And this is a freaking fruit loop. Um, so you, you can't, just harbor on the fact that, oh my God, I've lost the ability to work. So that means that I can't get the material things that I can get. Um, it's possible that I might lose my house. I'm losing my car. Um, food wise, it's diminished. Um, so let me go back. Because I'm like, when it comes out of food, Okay, the house and the car situation. Um, okay, but <clears throat> when MS sits and affects the fact of me not being able to eat, then that's why I have a problem. And, and it's doing that because now I have to eat all healthy and stuff, and which we all need to eat healthy, but and that's what I want to sit up here and say, it's not fair at all that <laughs> we are just basically killing ourselves with these chemicals that we're putting in this food that makes it taste so great. And you just want to sit at a freaking buffet of uh, McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and who don't like McDonald's french fries? But hell, I'm scared to go get french fries now because I don't know what they're going to put. What's 
this this the freaking salt might be come be uh so I can't even talk. It's it's ridiculous. You know? But with that being said, um <clears throat> you guys that are uh, watching this on um YouTube. Feel free to subscribe for me by pressing that little button right there. And then it's a previous episode right here. And um, I bid you a good day, good night, good evening, ladies and gents. And I totally appreciate it, every lovely female warrior that came in and made Fierce Friday elegant like always. Jadim. Love you, and good night.